and so we meet on the other side of the camera. So as I'm sure you've probably already guessed, I really don't like being in front of the camera. I prefer being behind the camera and talking to people. So this is gonna be a really new experience for all of us. A recurring question that I get on my channel and on all my other social media is what I use, what I'm using to film, how I'm recording my time lapses, what drawing programs I use, what software. So instead of being nice and showing you just the things that you asked to see, I'm going to make you watch everything. Because if you guys are going to make me suffer in front of camera, I'm going to make you suffer watching this video. I'm kidding, it's probably going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to split this video into two parts because it would be extremely long if I didn't. The first part being traditional art, and the second part being digital art. If you hear a continuous bubbling sound throughout the video, that is my fish tank. And if you hear someone talking in the other room, that is my sister and her friend. Before I continue with the video, please subscribe down below and turn on the bell so you can be notified every time I upload. My upload schedule is kind of sketch right now. I generally upload once a week and I will notify my followers on my Instagram page if I do not. Normally, I like to post on Tuesdays, but as of late, I'm posting more on Fridays and Saturdays. If you have a question that you'd like to ask anonymously or at all, you can follow my Tumblr. I post lots of sketches and work in progresses over there. For all my official pieces and a few sketches, follow my Instagram. I also am working on a story on Wattpad. And if you enjoyed today's video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will link everything down below. Now that all of that's out of the way, let's get into the video. Since we're starting with traditional art, we need to start with the basics. In this case, it's paper. And for watercolor, I use Arches watercolor paper. This is the best paper that I've had experience with. It barely buckles, and as long as you have it taped down, you'll get a completely flat result. It is a little pricey, but I love it to death, and when I can afford it, I stock up on it. And when I'm not painting watercolor, I just use good old printer paper. When it comes to pencils, I prefer mechanical pencils just because they pump lead out really fast, like as soon as you need it, there's no sharpening necessary. I got this one at Ingalls really cheap, and it works pretty good. When it comes to traditional pencils, I just use your good old Dixon Ticonderoga in HB. For colored pencils, Prismacolor is my top choice. I love their brand, their pencils are really good. And I've been using them pretty much as long as I've been using colored pencils. They are strong enough that they will color over black lines, however, if you are doing line work, so be careful with that. I also use their Cull Erase pencils, which are just erasable colored pencils. I use them for sketching mostly, but every once in a while I use them for coloring. If I'm doing a pencil or marker drawing that has lots of highlights, I like to use a white charcoal pencil. And that sums it up for pencils. Now we are on two pens. I use Micron pens as they pretty much work with anything. I have several different colors and I use different types of liners. They all do different things. They all have different sizes and colors, and I really enjoy them. I've never had a problem with them, except for when you are using touch markers or Copics. They sometimes bleed, I've learned. And speaking of Copics, I occasionally use Copic multiliners, though these were given to me. I did not buy them. When I'm adding highlights or low lights or anything, I occasionally use gel pens. I have a white gel pen for highlights and a metallic gel pen for details. Of course, I have them in different colors, not just those two. These are pretty basic pens, I'd say. I don't really know any artists who don't use them or haven't used them at some point in their lifetime. That covers it in the pens department, so we will now look at paints. When I am painting, if I am doing watercolor, I just use Reeves tube watercolors. When I'm working with acrylics, I either use Liquitex heavy body acrylics or just Premier acrylics. They're not that expensive and they work pretty good. I've found that acrylics are basically acrylics. You don't really need a very high-end product. Maybe there's some difference that I'm missing out on, but I'm not aware of it. Moving those aside, I also have a set of Koi watercolors and these are pretty simple. They're just a box set of watercolors for the go. Here's the swatches. I have a couple different cards in here that I paint on. And basically you just get a tray of watercolors that are water activated, obviously, a sponge, and a water brush. These are basically just emergency paints for me. I don't really use them unless I have to. When I'm adding embellishments or metallic bits, I use the Fine Tech Pearlescent Colors watercolor palette. The pigmentation on these is really good. I mean, it's gorgeous. Look at these. It doesn't really take much water to activate them at all either. But they will break your bank if you're not careful. 
And when I am using my two watercolors, I just use your average dollar palette. I mean, it doesn't, it's pretty simple. And yep, those are my painting supplies. Next on the list is my sketchbooks. When I'm sketching, I just use Strathmore sketchbooks that I have 100 sheets. I haven't gone through this one yet and I like the paper quality pretty good. It takes most of my materials very And well. if I'm sketching with watercolor, I use this Moleskin watercolor sketchbook. I'm not gonna show you the inside of it because frankly it's kind of embarrassing, but there it is. To mask off my paintings, I just use really simple and cheap masking tape. I have found that if you apply heat to it, it does not tear away any paper as it's being removed. And for drying watercolors or anything that is wet, I enjoy using a little portable just Revlon hair dryer. Honestly, this thing works as good as any heat gun I've ever seen. It even folds up to be pretty compact. It folds in half as you see. The next product we will talk about are markers. I use pretty much purely touch markers. I, they're the cheaper alternative to Copics or any other marker on the market. I have way too many of them, but that's a personal problem. I occasionally use Spectrum Noir illustrators, brush markers, and a few Copics, but I can't afford a lot of them because as you all know, they're, they get pretty expensive pretty fast. Now let's talk about my little on-the-go kit, which I've assembled for when I'm on road trips or out of town. Of course, I generally have a sketchbook with me when I'm carrying this around. It consists of a Faber-Castell kneaded eraser, a simple good old blending stump. I try to stay away from those because I, I don't know, I don't like the effect they put on the paper very much. A Pilot G2 pen, your good old average simple pencil sharpener a Draftmatic pencil, 0.5 millimeter, an assortment of Holly Rose pencils, and your good old-fashioned Dixon Ticonderoga. I bought this pencil case so long ago, I think it was like three dollars, and it does not have a tag on it any longer, so I don't know uh, where this pencil case comes from. And that is the inside of my little travel kit. That's about it as far as my drawing and art supplies go, and now I will talk about how I film my traditional art videos. I just went to Walmart and bought a Case Logic mini tripod. It comes with a shutter button for iOS or Android, whichever you are using. It's Bluetooth and basically lets you click to stop recording or click to start recording. It comes in handy when you're filming on a phone because you don't have to shakily hit the stop recording button every time you finish a cut. Everything comes in this neat little bag right here. There are just a few extra pieces that come with the tripod set. This little piece right here is the cover for the special lenses that come with this set. This is, this is a fish eye lens. It basically makes your film a bubble. This is the wide lens. I'm really not sure what it does completely. I haven't fooled around with it very much. This that is currently on my lens clip is a macro, which lets you see very, very close up. The lens clip clips it onto the camera of your phone and allows your camera to see through the little lens. And last but not least, there is this little light. It just provides some extra light if you are filming an art video, filming a makeup video. It attaches into your headphone jack if you have an older iPhone or Android. This is its highest setting. There's a medium setting and there's a low setting. And also coming with the Case Logic set is the tripod that I have. It's just a little iPhone tripod. Um, you can probably put an Android on it too. Um, you can unscrew this top part and make it sit in portrait mode. Film in landscape mode, people. We're not barbarians. And that sums up part one of this video, my traditional art supply. A tip to artists that I will put out there is if you are working on any kind of painting or any kind of traditional work for a long period of time, get up and stretch a lot. And I would also recommend burning some incense or a candle. It really helps relax you. And if you're anything like me, you need as much relaxation as you can get when you're working on a piece of art. You can see right over there, I am burning some candles currently. I also listen to podcasts or music or watch commentary YouTubers. It helps to have a second screen nearby, in which case is my iPad Pro. I like to have a big screen on which I can see my references or whatever I'm watching. 
and yeah it is about to start thunderstorming and I'm going to lose my lighting so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this video off here you guys are great thank you so much for watching my videos and caring enough to ask questions your support really puts me through everything honestly like if you guys weren't here I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing Thanks to those of you who encouraged me to get in front of the camera, I found it a really interesting experience. I didn't mind it as much as I thought I would, and uh, it was fun to just kind of get in front of y'all and uh, let you see what I'm doing when I'm talking. I guess everybody's got to get in front of the camera at some point, right? Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Comment to tell me how you feel. Turn on your notification bell so you know when I upload next. Goodbye for now, and I will see you all next week.